Where do you think the Lions rank in terms of total yards in the NFL? What are they? Total yards. Total yards per game. To give you to, three. Uh, to give you context, just so you get a number, leading the league is the Eagles with 470 yards a game. Yeah, because what they do on the ground, too. Miami, 427 a game. Buffalo, 413. Where do you think the Lions are? I'll say top five. All right, well, you're absolutely right. On the money, number four. Oh. With okay. 406 yards per game in total offense. It's crazy. More than the Chiefs, more than the Bucks, more than every other team outside of Miami, Buffalo, and Philly. And you go to the rushing. <laughs> what teams lead the NFL in rushing? Take a guess. Top three teams. Who are they? I'd say the Eagles are up there. Okay. Um, I would say it's another team that's been pounding the ball. Maybe the Browns? Jeff, I love you. That's why I love doing the show with you. Cleveland, number one at 200 yards a game. Philly, number two at 189. Number three coming in hot. The Detroit Lions Ooh. at 186 yards per game. And that's with the limited DeAndre last game. Third in rushing yards per game. Fourth in total yards per game in the NFL. This is not an accident. This isn't the defense is forcing turnovers. You get a short field to get some points up. You're scoring a ton. Right. This is a team that is moving the ball up and down the field almost at will. You really take out that first quarter and a half from the Philly game to start the season. I mean, they've been, they've been on it. The first drive was really good. They really stumbled for the rest of the half. And then this third quarter, fourth quarter, they found their stride. They got seven in the third. They got 14 in the fourth. The rest is history. They, they did lose the game. But the rest is history. They did a hell of a job, I think, uh, at least recovering to the best of their abilities. Coaching did not help them in week one. But week two, coaching was definitely there. The backups definitely st uh, helped out. They stepped in and did a hell of a job. That's absolutely an attribute to the coaching. Jared Goff played a hell of a game. His sixth career game with four touchdowns, zero interceptions, by the way. Tying, I believe, Steve Young and Dan Marino. Correct. I saw that stat. That is ridiculous. DeAndre Swift. Do I, do I even need to have a conversation about DeAndre Swift and what he's doing in the NFL right now? We talked about a thousand and a thousand. I'll playfully joke. This is a thing. Now, do I think the receiving is doable? That's the I tough don't. part, yeah. But you're looking at a 1,300-yard back, 1,400-yard yeah. back if right he's, now. If he's healthy and he gets uh, – yeah, you have to worry about health because last game he only got five carries. Now, he made the most of those five carries. <laughs> he did. He's, but that's he's the most impressive 10 part, yards a carry Which right is now. ridiculous. Now, if he can get more carries, not saying you got to give him 25 carries, but – he could easily be an 11, 1,200-yard rusher. There's no doubt. You know, we give, we're give we giving this offense a lot of credit for the way they're throwing the football, moving the ball downfield. Right. But it all starts with the run game. Always. And what Ben Johnson has been able to do, he's really revamped the way the Lions run the football. Multiple, multiple tight end sets. Tight end sets with offensive linemen and additional offensive linemen. And what they're doing, essentially... And you know what? We, we're going to get filmed for this tomorrow. We're, we're going to break it down together. But what's happening right now, Jeff, is the Lions are creating holes. And I'm not talking, you know, those the running backs really got to make it work. And, it, and if it does, it's good. They are parting the sea right now right. at the line of scrimmage. It is unbelievable. And it starts with what? Run block scheme. Spreading All it that is, it's power runs. Yeah. Pulling the guards. You... The way they pull the guards, the, they double team so effectively. And the easiest way for a play to get blown up is if you miss a double team or somebody misses a block. Two games into the year, they are dominating the line of scrimmage. And it's because of their run scheme. It's phenomenal. That I, and in the minute I wish I could sit here and like have a different conversation and tell you, look, you know, they got to work on the run game. They got to do this better. I would love to do that. I can't. They, this offense, outside of, again, a quarter and a half, has been exceptional, have had their way with opposing defenses, have protected Jared Goff pretty damn well, and have run the football at a level you didn't even expect. Right. 186 a game? <laughs> a healthy DeAndre Swift? <whistles> My goodness, Jeff. The most impressive thing to me is to be able to run the football and then the following week... 
be able to run the football. Like, there's it, it, Ben Johnson in his scheming, and that's the thing you notice, too. They have the play with Amon Ross St. Brown in the end around. Like, that was probably in a formation where Washington's thinking they're going to run the ball. Boom. Well, how many times did they motion and Amon they didn't Ross? give it to him. He set that up, man. Yeah, right. It's crazy. And it is. I, I, I'm going to go back and find out the exact number of times they ran that set for them to set it up in that exact moment when they used it. It was the perfect play call. Washington had just scored. They're coming on the field, ready for a conventional, hand it off, and let's see what's going to happen. They pull the end around. St. Brown goes 50-plus yards down the field. We all know the rest. That is, But it's keeping defenses guessing. That's a good yes. OC. That, that's a good OC. There's that. There is, let's, let's call it what it is. The way they are run blocking at, at this point to start the year is nothing short of... It's it's beyond impressive. It's unbelievable. It's it's everything you could have dreamed of when you hired Ben Johnson. And again, three years ago, four years ago, six years ago, I would have pulled my hair out had the Lions ever considered hiring internally. And suddenly, Dan Campbell gets hired. Granted, Ben Johnson was here before uh, Dan, but you start to hear the name, right, after the Anthony Lynn decision. Well, there's this young guy in the building. He's really coming up helping with uh, play calling. He's really helping out with planning for the game. Okay, cool. I like this name, Ben Johnson. Let's learn more about him. Let's take a deeper dive. Oh, okay, wait. Zach Taylor tried to hire him. Oh, wait. He comes from this tree. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's something there. Right. The conversation happens on the show. We start talking more about Ben Johnson. He should be the O.C., I mean, this is, as much as I'd love to sit here and literally tell you to your face, hey, Jeff, 100%, this is what I expected out of Ben Johnson, I'd be lying. I would be. Not, not this level of production. No. With this, again, it is a pain in the ass team to game plan for, and they don't even have Jameson Williams available yet. Hawkinson's playing like a turd. But he has them clicking. And it starts really at the fundamental level at the line of scrimmage. And that's coaching. Look at Kyle Shanahan. Like, imagine facing Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers, and you know they're going to run the football at him, and they still run the football, and they're able to run it. Like, that's, I think to me, that's how, how I identify good OCs or good coaches offensively is if a team knows what you're going to do, and you still have success doing it. I think that tells a lot about you and your knowledge. Of the when game. you're able to run the ball the way the Lions are able to, right? You put out extra tight ends. You put out the extra offensive linemen. Right. That also sets up, I don't know, play, <laughs> play action, man. Just and who constantly does, on your toes. Who benefits from it, right? Because now you're sucking in the safeties. You're sucking in these linebackers, outside receivers, and Jared. Jared as well. And so far, it's really been Amon Ross St. Brown benefiting a lot. Yeah. Josh Reynolds at times too, but St. Brown. Guys, I don't want to hear that. Oh, the league hasn't adjusted for him yet, Adam. No, every opposing team, I promise you, start their week. Hey, guys, all right, we got Detroit this week. Here's what we need to understand. If we lose at the line of scrimmage, we are done for. That's the first thing you say as a defensive coordinator. Interior, on the edge, we need to be perfect. This is what the Lions like to do. This is how they pull their guards. This is the sets they run, yada, yada, yada. They get into all of that. And then they say, you see this guy number 14 right here? That guy is a problem. I don't ever want to see us not having at least two people guarding this individual. I'll live with DJ Chark. I will live with Josh Reynolds. I will live with Hawkinson. But don't you dare let this guy run for 70 yards on us and catch another 115 and two touchdowns. Don't we dare line you up in the end zone, or excuse me, in the red zone, one-on-one -on -one against this guy. Because you can't guard him. Because clearly they couldn't guard him in Washington, and clearly they couldn't guard him against Philly. So who the hell are we? Teams are game planning for this guy, and he's still beating him. Because of his individual brilliance, mm -hmm. because of the scheme, because of the amazing game planning by Ben Johnson and company. The rapport with him and Jared. The rapport with Jared Goff. Everything is clicking right now. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to hear the excuses of, oh, well, St. Brown, no one's adjusting to him yet. I promise you, he was circled on that bulletin board alongside DeAndre Swift. Those are the two X-Factor players on offense right now. 
and that's how it'll be for the rest of the year. And we haven't even seen Jameson Williams at the field, which is, I find, insane. And you can't even pull the... Well, they haven't really played... They play two teams that are pretty good defensively, especially that pretty good secondary. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not like they play the Tennessee Titans yep. where you have Stephon Dix running around like a madman and getting open. It's He's playing some tough teams defensively, and he's still getting open. So give credit where it's due.